friends welcome back to this course on employment communication we are here today to have uh, four practice sessions on group discussions and uh, we are in lectures 26 to 29 of the course this is uh, module 6 and we have uh, once again i repeat four lab sessions sessions 1 to 4 this short introduction so that we know the modalities of the course and uh, what we are going to do in this batch of uh, four sets of lab exercises. We are in module 6 which is uh, on group discussions and uh, we are going to have uh, four group discussions of 10 minutes each duration. In each group there will be seven or eight group discussions and uh, they will be given 10 minutes as I said to discuss the topic. They have already started reading on the topic followed by a short feedback. This will be completing the exercise. So as I said we have three types of group discussions today. The first is the traditional group discussions and uh, these have been explained in the video lectures. The second is the case study GDs. This is uh, very important for students of management and uh, techno managers to exercise themselves with because it makes them increase or better upon the analytical skills in a sense. It's also that which molds their character and personality. And I believe in my practice with students of the Vijisom, you know, Gupta School of Management at the IIT Kharagpur, that uh, this case study discussion brings out the best in them as managers at the workplace. Why we have this short introduction is because we have a very new kind of GD practice today, which is called the Fishbowl GD. So we move to giving you the bare outlines of the fishbowl group discussion. For introduction, what we have uh, to say is that uh, in today's world, in today's workplace, most employers will view effective communication as most integral, as let's say the single most important point very, very important point which is critical <coughs> for the success of the individual in such a competitive workplace as we have today. So the fishbowl group discussion is an activity which is designed to provide specific help in developing the interpersonal communication skills and the discussion skills. These two skills as I mentioned, uh, interpersonal communication skills and number two is discussion skills. These are critical to success in business and industry as well as society. This is as per Macpherson in his publication 2005, which I will show in the references. To move further, this is an activity which is, which is designed so that it will help the students to identify and practice effective interpersonal behaviors. So we have had uh, lectures on communication, but this is an activity which will stress on effective interpersonal <coughs> strategies and behaviors and actions in a professional context, I think that's most important that we are going to have the third kind of GD in a professional context. And uh, all the while the students or the participants or we call them group discussants because they take, uh, they take actively part in a GD. The point is all this while the discussants will be confronting or uh, facing or tackling issues which concern them as managers in today's business oriented world. This activity uses a fishbowl discussion. I put fishbowl, fishbowl within the inverted comma and this is a term derived from the format of the discussions as we have it, the third type. What we have is uh, what will be shown in the next slide but let me just describe to you in a nutshell what's going to happen in the fishbowl discussion. You have uh, the active participants who are the fish and they are surrounded by the bowl or the observers who listen to and evaluate them and the way in which the dynamics or the workplace dynamics of the group is emerging. That Hensley, Silverman and Hansberg in 2004 in their publication have supported this kind of group discussion and the figure of this kind of group discussion is here, figure one model of fishbowl discussions. What's the rationale for this kind of fishbowl fish bowl, uh, group discussion? There are several reasons for having this kind of activity and this kind of practice. The first <coughs> is that you have on the 
outer side surrounding the group discussions, the active participants, you have the evaluators. And uh, the evaluators are considering not only the content which is being discussed among the participants, but also the communication activities that help or hinder discussion. More on this in figure one to follow soon. Second point is that this kind of fishbowl structure provides a systematic way to identify, examine, and teach specific interpersonal communication behaviors to the participants. And the third and last on this slide is that this fishbowl activity provides a chance. It gives an opportunity to all the participants so that, in a sense, you know, the entire class can be participating in the group discussion at the same point of time. So either you are participating or you are evaluating. And in the next round, we can uh, share, reverse the roles. So the participants become the observers and the observers become the participants in the second round. We continue on the rationale for having the fishbowl discussion. This activity is intended. This activity is geared to push the students to conduct research. I mean, you don't have to do research in a uh, traditional sense of the term. You just have to mentally research. Of course, you have your cell phones on silent mode and you can research. <coughs> so this is an activity which uh, pushes the students to conduct research and form opinions on topics which are relevant to the course. We have a course in uh, the Humanities and Social Sciences Department, which is called uh, Master of Human Resource Management. It was a course uh, redesigned from an earlier course called MTech in HRD M. So in this course, it is uh, a professional course which is, uh, which is attempting to prepare the students, we call them the participants because they are quite senior. Some of the participants here will have 45 to 46 months of experience, whatever. In the future professional life, this kind of activity will be helpful to the participants. The other reason, perhaps the last rationale for conducting this kind of group discussion, the fishbowl one, is that uh, the <coughs> focus will shift from teacher, that is uh, me in this case, to the students or the participants. And this is a very good way by which we can, uh, this is a very nice way in which we can in a sense, force the participants to indulge in deep learning and to think seriously and wisely. Now, what's the procedure? Uh, let's say we have a typical class of 30. The MHRM program at IIT Kharagpur has an intake of 30, but uh, somehow we have been managing with 15 to 20 students. We have 50 in this uh, MHRM batch of uh, 2018 to 2020. So typically we divide the students into groups of <coughs> 10 or 8 and we have that um, optimal situation uh, at hand today. Uh, the students will determine the topics to research and discuss uh, prior to the beginning of the fishbowl GD and uh, they have uh, been already advised to consider the issues in the professional context. In fact, for this second type of GD, we will be using the case study scenario only because they are in the professional context. To continue further, you may have topics like discrimination or harassment at the workplace, women and the glass ceiling effect. These are just to name a few, but today we have some other topics, so we need not dwell on this in detail. <coughs> Individuals may work independently to conduct research in preparation for the group discussion. The group will meet together to create a list of eight to ten key questions. Just listen carefully. After you have got the case study sheets, all of you also listen. After you have got the case study sheets, you will uh, make a list of eight to ten key questions which you will <coughs> examine. And uh, you will be addressing those topics or those key questions during the fishbowl GD. You are also, number two, allowed to rank the questions, one, two, up till eight or seven, let's say and address them in order of importance. That is number one is most important. And uh, maybe you can give me the final list of questions before the GD begins. So now before the actual GD begins, we will uh, be looking at some of the behaviors and actions that either help or hinder meaningful group communication. <coughs> we have already circulated positive and supportive and defensive or in a sense, the idea is that defensive behaviors are meant to 
to take in the offensive overtures or offensive statements of the other. We have circulated positive and supportive non-verbal cues in advance and we have gone through it. But here we have uh, table 1 which shows positive and negative discussion behaviors. Now keep that at the back of your mind but concentrate on table 1 positive and negative discussion behaviors and I will not dwell on this in detail. So now you have uh, figure 2 in your mind positive and negative behaviors during the fishbowl discussion and then we come to a small evaluation sheet figure 2 shows the evaluation sheet there are around 10 items on which you will be evaluated tally marks can be made and total score can be calculated you can make comments I have brought the print versions with me this is uh, figure 2 what we have on the screen this is the sample fishbowl discussion evaluation sheet this is for those who are in the outer ring those who are the evaluators <coughs> So now individual evaluation sheet will be given for each student in which uh, the names of the, the observer who is evaluating <coughs> the participant. Let's say for example we give Alolika the sheet to evaluate uh, Rajarshi. Then uh, Alolika will uh, focus her attention on him. So in that case you will need to sit here so that you can see him from the front as well. We can work on that. So apart from that individual evaluation sheet, we have a group evaluation form as well and that can be for the 8th or the 7th member of the team who are observing the bowl of the fish bowl discussion. So this is figure 3 and it shows the sample uh, group fish bowl discussion evaluation form. Uh, as we have done in figure 1, positive and negative behaviors, so we have positive and negative behaviors on the sheet. Now. Once you have understood the criteria, I hope you have understood the criteria. Say yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so we have also seen the slides, though they were posted quite late because I was working on them as usual. So once you have understood the criteria, you can again check up on your mobile phones and look at the PPT on the fishbowl discussion. And once you are familiar with the evaluation form, forms, which I will give you soon, then we can start the group discussion. This discussion will also be 10 minutes in duration. Let's say we can make it 7 or 8 minutes and <coughs> 2 minutes for a winding up. Or if you wish, uh, what should we do? Shall we make it 7 minutes or 8 minutes plus 2 minutes of feedback? I think that will be better. Yes, so we'll make it uh, 8 minutes and 2 minutes for feedback. And remember that uh, because you are all mature students, you can give feedback to each other in a balanced manner and I can also give in my comments. This is for the first and the second type of GD, the traditional GD and the case study type of GD. Okay, now let's move further on the procedure. And uh, so we have the first uh, fishbowl discussion in which the group will select a member to serve as facilitator. Not necessarily the one who is uh, the most mature, but whatever democratically and with transparency you can select one member to function as the facilitator in the fishbowl discussion. The facilitator will initiate the discussion. He will be the first one to speak. He will give a brief, a brief introduction, not more than two minutes. I will say not more than one minute on the topic and the purpose of the fishbowl discussion. The purpose is to solve the questions at the end of the case study interview, uh, case study GD, sorry. Facilitator may also assume the role of keeping the dialogue moving if conversation wanes. And in the final few minutes, that is final two minutes, we will let you know that the time is up. We will show you two minutes and you know that it's time to wind up. Let's look at the role of the evaluators, the outer margin or the fishbowl. <coughs> And uh, the evaluators may also ask additional questions once we have the last two minutes. They uh, may ask additional <coughs> questions of the group. We have enough sheets for that. And they can provide the brief feedback, focusing on some of the strengths and weaknesses observed during the discussion. This will not be person specific, this will not be group discussion specific, but general. Let's not name anybody. Then we have a follow up conversation. 
minute number 11 and that's all so these are few of the references used for the preparation of the fishbowl discussion GD and introducing you to the idea of the same and thank you and God bless all the best we are now in a position to begin the first group discussion Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, we have a topic today which is corporal punishment. Uh, so this has been discussed since the 19th century when uh, Frederick John White, he was killed in military flogging and Reginald Canceller, he was a student, he was killed by being beaten up in school. So in uh, this happened in 1846 and since then it has been observed as an inhuman practice in all forms of the society, be it in Europe, be it in parts of America. But still in these days we see it uh, being followed in some parts of India, Asia and Africa too. So Adding uh, to that, I'd like to state that at least 30 countries all over the world have banned corporal punishment. Uh, this includes countries like New Zealand, Canada, most of the European countries actually and the northern part of the, of the American regions. But uh, according to your suggestion, what I think like most of the population of our country, like more than 60% of population is belonging from the rural areas. But according to my opinion that corporal punishment is important. Why I am saying this? Because uh, the former families who is residing in the villages, they are not much more educated to guide their children in education areas. So the teacher is the personality who is guiding them for the or restricting them toward the education. Maybe some values and ethics they are learning from his father and maybe his from parents, but still the corporal punishment for the education purpose they are getting from their teachers only. Right to that point, I'll say that I recently I uh, read a news in Times of India. A boy was beaten in school, and he was he was beaten to that extent that he was hospitalized. So I want to put a question that how how much liberty that uh, 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 teacher should be given uh, that. He is beaten and he is hospitalized. So and corporal punishments can also have <coughs> adverse effects on children. For example, if a child is uh, very shy or introvert or is really too closed, uh, being beaten up or being scolded too much can bog him down and can stop his progress also. So like you said, it is uh, essential for someone's growth because their parents can't guide them, the teachers can guide them, but then there's a limit to how, uh, there, there should be an understanding of how a teacher uh, connects to the children and how uh, he or she can implement it. Yeah. First, of all, like to answer question, first of all, I'd like to answer this question that how much liberty should the teachers be given? Yes. According to me, uh, teachers have the li right and liberty to train the students. They are not uh, entitled yes. to actually beat the students or give them corporal punishments. This can lead to severe uh, consequences like we have seen my friend has discussed about the death of a child and you might have discussed regarding many things. So corporal punishment should be strictly banned. However, we should also look at the consequences what negative consequence or negative effects what it I will think is what I think you are saying it should be completely bad but what I think is if there is yeah, no uh, punishment given then how would a, a person would yes, uh, yes. 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 I would like to yeah. agree with both of yeah. them uh, like punishment is necessary but then you should know the extent to which a punishment should be given yeah, yes. anyway beating or uh, you know harassing them uh, cannot be justified so like we can say that we can give some other punishments punishments are necessary we can give them some other punishments like like we had in the olden days doing something doing some physical activity uh, instead of uh, you know just sparing them like that because what I believe that we had this old school of thought where you spare the rod and you spoil the child that holds true to a great extent if you just uh, earlier it was like if students uh, did something wrong they were given some punishment they feared their teachers they respected them now there is no sense of respect uh, 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 students take it lightly if a teacher says something even li uh, lightly to the students I mean uh, it becomes a uh, you know uh, news in the media and then the teachers are falsely targeted because of this yeah I so agree that to is the reason I, I agree to a point <coughs> and I think uh, because after school or after college we have to deal in real life scenarios where uh, there is no mercy for anybody mm. so we have to be strong enough to face those uh, difficult challenges uh, in life no, so yes actually uh, but, right, actually that is the yeah, reason of that, but we agree mind. that uh, I mean, beating is no way justified, yeah, yeah. but then we should have some of the other forms of punishment. That's it's right. not the yes, thing which is beneficial for the student yes. as well. Yeah. Why can't we have a 
motivation session or a basically a training or a uh, I would like to actually actually according, according to me it's an inhuman practice and it has been abolished by most parts of the world by now and so I think it's time to get rid of that but having uh, noticed the point you have brought up that what if without any punishment uh, like spare the fraud spoil the child that is necessarily there but uh, we have to find out other measures to deal with it but another thing I would like to put forward is uh, we are talking about abolishment of uh, this particular practice in schools and uh, in uh, families maybe. What about uh, corporal punishment in prisons? That is uh, moreover necessary according to me. Yes, because it sets a deterrent to yes. the criminal so that, I mean, it sets a precedent that you cannot, uh, you know, get away if you do something wrong. Exactly. So that is uh, necessary and not only, and uh, I think it's high time we redefine the rarest of the rare crimes that is defined because we now have capital punishment only in the rarest of the rare crimes and most of the crimes, uh, I mean, heinous crimes are all also not, uh, they also don't come under that category. So it's high time we revise that and then again the punishment should be given not because I mean someone is a juvenile or something, uh, punishment should be given upon the degree of the crime and yes capital punishment. Uh, picking up from where Varsha left, the primary question that needs to be addressed here is why we have corporal punishment, right? And is it for retribution done out of pure vengeance that the teacher inflicts harsh and criminal uh, puni uh, uh, punishment uh, which is right for a criminal to a fragile and innocent mind? Or is it done for a deterrent uh, to prevent the child from committing further misbehavior? Now, it if it's a re retribution, uh, then I think it's very wrong. But in case of deterrence, we obviously have uh, uh, further modern means to deal with the issue. We've long come up, uh, gone past the uh, days of caning and flogging from the gurus to their shishyas. And nowadays, we have child psychologists who suggest that uh, inflicting harsh uh, punishments on the child do have adverse effects in the long run and it hinders their growth mentally and emotionally so what we are doing is not a great service so i think uh, what uh, and to add what auditro said regarding us and other countries i think us has already uh, banned uh, criminal uh, corporal punishments in over 20 to 30 states uh, among the 52 states that it has and uh, that kind of speak volumes that uh, and that is per se us is a country with the highest criminal rates in the, one of the highest crime rates in uh, youth so uh, that is uh, that kind of speak volumes of what should be done and what mm, should not absolutely so, uh, rajashi in this context uh, yes most of the parts of the world has already got rid of corporal punishment in terms of um, it meted out to children and students but uh, then again i would like uh, the forum to discuss more about corporal punishment in case of prisoners yes, bearing corporal is, punishment with the entire world is a good idea but we cannot just copy it uh, the primary, as Rajeshri said, the primary motive of giving corporal punishment is that the child or the adult do not actually repeat his misdeed. And we should actually not compare the punishments given to the children with the punishments given to that of an established murderer or established criminal. So, uh, at a primary level, what I think that the punishment given to the adult or children should be banned at all. However, the punishments that are given to the established murderers or basically the uh, uh, established yeah. criminals should should be taken into consideration and should be uh, given uh, with due respect of the established crime. But yes, then according again, to some the amount uh, of limit should be there, uh, which has to be put so that we don't have such killings in police remand and all that, because that is also increasing these days. Yes. And so we have to get rid of corporal punishment in prisons too, but not to that extent. Uh, and they should be. Uh, like uh, police should be able to learn, teach them a lesson because uh, that is how. Uh, it happens and uh, that is how it, it should happen uh, that is my point on uh, prisoners view like uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of torture centers also uh, in countries like uh, Pakistan and India where uh, people who are involved in terrorist activities are uh, given corporal punishment so that uh, they leak out the information they probably have and we could save millions of lives, lives because of it so yes it is important but in some sectors it is in some sectors it is not mm. so I think we have reached uh, to a conclusion that uh, corporal punishment is necessary but to a certain sect of the society and to a certain level. Yes, according to my opinion, it is my conclusion that in child when it, it is growing up then there should be corporal punishment because once he will not learn the ethics and values of life he is going to definitely repeat this mistake whenever he is going to work in corporate sectors like different kind of actors there like uh, sharing the information or stealing the information from the cor corporate sector which can be harmful for the industries. So this kind of activity is going to 
maybe it's can helpful for the each and indi individual. So I think the corporal sector should be there in the childhood uh, or childhood when he is growing up. Friends, let us just uh, we all, all have agreed that the corporal punishment should be banned or we do not actually support the physical harassment or the physical beating of the child. Let us just discuss some other ways uh, so that that corporal uh, punishment should be tackled. Or uh, basically, what about can be the other remedies we should discuss that the teachers and the parents should follow. After banning the corporal punishment, I think proper education and upbringing of the child from a very young age is is essential. Mm -hmm. Now, if there are issues with the child, in spite of that, then uh, sitting with professional psychologists uh, to get into the deep cause, root cause of the issue is is the only way out. Actually, children, and the interaction children need of the parents with grooming. the yeah, please. interaction with the uh, teachers and uh, as well as the father and guardian who is taking care of the child should be there in a regular interval so that this can be sort out the problem which is occurring. Like uh, the teacher should not be allowed much more, uh, uh, maybe corporal <coughs> punishment. In the same time, yeah. they should get yeah. the freedom of doing this yeah, thing from the parents. I, say, I would like to say that um, uh, it should. Act, I mean, um, parents should really take care of their uh, children so that they don't perform such mistakes in school. So that <coughs> teachers have to do such such a thing, and also they should not be very. They shouldn't provide them with the very cozy lifestyles or very uh, rosy life so that. They are not uh, ready to accept the toughness in the life. Yes, yes exactly. they have to be exposed to the reality yes. and that is how we can conclude. The forum is almost uh, having a consensus that uh, corporal. corporal punishment is uh, inhuman and should be banned in certain sectors of the society. But in case of uh, heinous crimes and all, it should be meted out yes. to some extent. So that is how I think we should conclude. Yes, yes. exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Jitika Dasgupta. Uh, I am here to give a feedback about the GD session which just took place. Uh, right at the beginning, I think the participants should have introduced themselves. Uh, so let's not waste any time and get on with that. Hi everyone, I am Varsha Vijay. Hello, I am Pooja. Hi, I am Akshay Sonar. Hi, I am Purva Chaudhary. I am Rajoshi Trivedi. Hello, I am Mohammad Hashim Ali. Hello, I am Auditra Lahiri. Hello everyone, I am Ankur Ajwal. Uh, now talking about the GD session which uh, just took place, uh, firstly I think the content was uh, really good, everybody had uh, certain valid points uh, to give but uh, the main uh, fallback that I noticed was that there were a lot of uh, repetitive points like everybody, nobody was crossing each other, that was good, everybody was given a chance to speak uh, whatever they had to but there were a lot of repetitive points so like uh, and a certain person was speaking uh, pro, I mean pro the point and also against it so I think what you should do is uh, you should have a clear idea of what you want to say. That was uh, one clear thing. Apart from that, uh, people were using a lot of fillers while uh, stating their points. Uh, like, uh, you know, ers and ahs in the middle of sentences which shouldn't happen uh, definitely uh, as a part of a GD. Uh, so yeah, apart from that, I think uh, everybody spoke very well and everybody gave the others a chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jitika Dasgupta. Hi, I am Alalika Roy. Hi, I am Pallavi Shah. Hi, I am Tanvi Ajit. Hello, I am Tithu Nandi. Hi, I am Kosu Sangupta. Hello, I am Anupam Dash. So, uh, today we are here to talk about the pros and cons of television as it is. Uh, maybe talk about the educational benefits of television or the need of educational programs in current television uh, schedules. So, without much further ado, let's begin. Uh, like you mentioned, the educational programs that come on television nowadays, they are of utmost importance in, with today's generation. Because earlier what would happen is, right, nowadays television is basically the main source of entertainment that is adopted by even the children. Earlier when we were kids, we used to actually go out and play. But nowadays everybody is hooked to screens, be it television screens, be it your mobile screens or anything else. So television needs to have, uh, you know, proper content, educational content from which the children can actually take back some learning. But that doesn't always happen in the scenario nowadays because there are certain programs which hinder the uh, you know the learning and the education of the children as well. 
Yeah, one of the reasons for this happening is that we have both parents working. So earlier we had like grandparents at home who used to like take uh, care of the children or they had friends in the neighborhood who used to play. But nowadays we see that both the parents are working and once the child comes back home, he's like hooked to the TV. So uh, yeah, taking from her points, there are both positives and negatives to viewing a television. A television should be a source of both entertainment and educational uh, platform. Uh, so considering uh, after a day's work, a man should come back to uh, to his house and uh, view television for as a source of entertainment. Uh, and uh, a child should also get uh, some educational value from what is being viewed on television. So uh, as Tanvi just pointed out, that uh, there should be a proper monitoring of what the child actually views on television uh, <coughs> pertaining to t- environmental and social needs uh, that he actually uh, needs to grow and learn from that. Uh, but uh, we can uh, concentrate, but there are too many negatives to uh, uh, television as a whole, uh, especially uh, something pertaining to the Indian television that has the daily soaps, uh, which uh, generates and uh, which generates a mindset of uh, various negative uh, social uh, social issues like polygamy, uh, domestic violence, um, and then uh, like it's it's. Uh, it, uh, much of it is also much of uh, much of it also has to do with uh, women centric uh, forwarding for, where women are uh, the center of uh, what binds the family. Uh, it promotes non nuclear families as well, but uh, a major part of it has to do with the uh, regressive mindset of uh, uh, Indian society. And adding to one of the disadvantages of viewing TVs for long hours is that people don't spend much time reading. Earlier, reading was the habit that was followed, but nowadays it's like uh, they spend their free hours just watching TV, rubbish on TV. So it's like yeah, adding to what you said, uh, reading was a, is a very good habit, always was. Uh, but even more than that, I mean, reading of course, but people don't go out nowadays. Yeah. That is becoming a main problem. Like the socializing that they do is via different means. It's not actually face to face. That's that's not happening nowadays. Yeah. So television also adds to that. Uh, and adding to her point, together with the daily soaps that we have, we also have certain reality television shows yes. which are also extremely detrimental, I think, to the development of any child. And yeah, monitoring of what is viewed on television is absolutely imperative. Given the fact that we have discussed about the uh, pros and cons of television, what needs to be shown and what we need to see as well. We have to, given in the case study that only 12% of people see the uh, national television where educational programs are shown, my question on the floor is that how much how much educational things need to be shown on the national television how much we see them what we can do as my opinion is that we can have awareness programs to deliver all those things that we want to do because national television is national programs or national television national channels are those that we really see we mainly focus on commercial television that for me told that uh, we focus more on daily soaps and entertainment programs so if we want to promote national uh, social problems and social awareness i must focus or we must focus on awareness and more campaigns rather than on television standing on the second decade of 21st century if you keep our eyes on the pan indian scenario then you can easily see that the uh, television and this uh, communication service is one of the major source of income from the government so already government has some rules and regulations uh, to monitor all the things as what the ad- uh, advertisement strategy will be there and uh, what the programs uh, should be there for instance i can say that government has already uh, television act that says that uh, the program which are not good for the people under 12 under the age of 12 the program should not be telecasted uh, before the 8 p.m. Yes. and the programs which are not suitable for the people under 16 should not be telecasted uh, uh, before 10 p.m. Uh, I would like to uh, bring night. a new dimension to this discussion. So let's think about whether it's the job of television and the TV channels to actually promote education. Yes, or is it I, there I would like to add to his point because uh, I think education is primarily we, we take fr- from our parents, we take from our schools. So Television is something which should be there for relaxing and for children, I think the cartoon is like if they are seeing the cartoons, their communication skill English is improving. So it's like a relaxing way where you can improve your communication skill and it's it's actually good. Beyond the point of time, it uh, becomes (laughs) addictive. That is where we have to put a stop. It should be the job of the fantastic point here. 
that television should be also entertainment we are all focusing on the child and the children and education the, especially on the youth section of the society but there are another section of the society who are the working class or the housewives and who are the aged person most of them they don't get uh, to get, get something to do and to sp spend their time so they they get also entertained from the television channels and now it is uh, taking the help of the technology we can do one thing it is uh, obviously uh, operant in the uh, technology uh, technological field that people can lock the channels uh, you can yes. you can contact that your television operator provider and you can lock the channels if you are if you uh, feeling that these cartoon networks and such type of things yeah, such type of channels that are go, going to be very uh, harmful for the children they are taking their time so people can people can control it from that from that place but uh, also in the uh, also in the uh, scenario of the housewife they uh, do all the all the things they are busy throughout the day and in the evening they also need some entertainment and I would like to tell you another point that uh, I last year I have seen there was a pan Indian reality show and it was dance show. So one guy was there who was who performed very well and when he was asked that from where he start learning dance, he said from the television. Yes, so the I would like yeah. to add to this point because uh, and because uh, actually nowadays all the parents are fucking parents, so they don't have that time that what their childs are good at. So, only education, no play, exercise okay, life. No, so, that yeah. is that education, yeah. given education is a very drab and a very raw thing. Yes. yes. Presenting Absolutely. education is, as a sweet pill yes. to the children can be an effective way and, and television can be a very good way of doing it. Like you mentioned about cartoons, mentioned about cartoon and uh, other entertaining programs to be done. So, presenting that in that mode can be really be done in that Yes, so I think they should OTP, yeah, but television should be one of the means of, uh, you know, entertainment. Yes. They should also, you know, uh, yes. go and by entertainment, they yeah. can just, uh, I can can the question. They can yes. considering uh, that most of the group is in a consensus regarding that television, while they should have educational programs as well, the, I would say the entertainment aspect of it cannot be counted out. So, in that case, I think, uh, imposing better parental controls on the content that the children can view. Uh, that should be uh, the job of the parents. If television is becoming addictive, uh, that is where the role of the parents actually <coughs> comes. And we should not actually blame television for uh, spoiling the minds of the young. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rajoshi Tribedi. Uh, I was observing the GD that we, uh, took place just now and uh, as an outsider, I had a couple of observations. Uh, firstly, uh, congratulations to everyone. It was a really well coordinated and cooperated GD. Uh, there was no cutting off of anyone from the another. So uh, uh, they were very good in that respect. Uh, however, a couple of pointers. Uh, there were uh, instances of uh, like uh, repeating of points, which uh, was the case in the previous GD as well. So otherwise, I think overall it was good. There were a variety of uh, mixture of points, uh, barring the repetition that was there. Uh, Tito did a very good job about uh, in the opening and closing of the GD session and uh, there were, everyone was good so I think it was a very good and well uh, planned out GD. Thank you. Thank you.